You are the vitamin C in my orange juice. And today we're going to speak about the most important coin in all of crypto. Her name is XRP. Some people say that XRP stands for extremely wrecked poop. But actually, there's more than that than meets the eye, friends. You see, this is the XRP chart, cycle one, two, three, and four. And we are going to discuss why it's the most important part in crypto. Why, why is this the actual most important part? It's because if the XRP army, which I am praying for, I am cheering for, if they can send XRP, the dog shit token, through the all-time high, it will reinvigorate all dead coins in crypto. It will also give hope to people who are holding coins of communities where they know that they won't be able to take on cycle one narratives and keep reinventing themselves constantly, which is basically pretty much impossible to do. You see, it's never anybody's cycle. It's just their turn. That's the most important theme that I have discovered from researching and actually being in over 500 crypto says, yes, you see these eyes, I don't sleep. I've been through so many things. And guess what? After being through a lot of them, I'm like, hang on, I'm noticing some patterns here. They're all scams. <laughs> no, no, tongue in cheek. Oh, they are actually. It's all scams. It's not really scams, friends. The only thing that's scammy is people's attention spans. That's why, yes, crypto, okay, everything's a scam. But then nothing's a scam because really it's people's attention. That's it. Everyone's like a goldfish. So, but you can't really blame them because it's like it's product market fit. It's like, well, businesses out there in the real world, 95% of businesses fail after three years. So would you say people's attention spans in the real world are also scams? Yeah, but that's just the marketplace. It's up to you to capture people, to grip people, to offer products and services and to give people something that differentiates you from the rest of the marketplace. Don't you worry, friends, that we're pumping some music here today. We're actually give you a nice... You have to always pump it, friends. Of course, I'm wearing the cute little Jigglypuff hat. Of course, we're going to sing our song of the bull market for some hopium and copium. Maintained near top 10 status. That's what XRP was able to do. Despite being extremely wrecked poop, poop despite having no use case for the coin, it's, friends, I'm telling you, this, it should be studied in university. What the XRP army have been able to do, right? Ripple have literally... And metaphorically, pull down their pants, open up the XRP army's mouth, and just diarrhea shat all over their face. That's exactly what they've been doing for 10 years. And guess what? That's not even me talking. That's the XRP Bitcoin ratio talking, friends. Of course, by the way, did I tell you, if you've got any children in the room, make sure they leave because they don't want to see anything as disgusting as this chart. That's right. It's a family-friendly show. Please do not let your children see this chart. This is... The chart of a horror show. This is from 2013. Yeah, by the time you're watching this, friends, I, I'm I'm wait. I pray one day. I pray when one day. Please, please, please. Can you guys just do this? Can you just do this? I just because if it does this, it basically it's a blessing and a curse. It's a curse as in now everyone's gonna hold everything forever because they want the XRP pump. But also as a blessing, it's like oh, see if you just hold long enough, the momentum and the boiling pot eventually just pops. Just like mushroom, just like a, uh, a popcorn. Yeah, just like a mushroom. Yay, mushroom cloud. Okay, that's what you want. So this is XRP versus Bitcoin. Of course, it's gone absolutely nowhere for 10 years. And it's actually quite sad. It's actually been more than 10 years. It's been like, you know, oh my gosh, we're going on to the 11th year now. Very important to understand that chart. So XRP has been able to maintain a powerful top 10 status for the whole time. Oh, still nothing. Look, the truth is, is uh, XRP is actually very useful. It's useful for the early people, Cripple, to dump on everybody. Cripple love taking off their belt, taking a big fat shit all everyone's faces and saying, you know what, you should be thanking me for taking that big fat doo-doo on your face. That's right, I'm not even going to wipe. That's what they've been doing because they've been dumping the inflation 7% per year, whatever it is they're doing. And of course, that, friends, I just want to remind you as well, they do psychological warfare on the on their holders. So if you're an XRP army, I know it's gonna hurt to hear. But hey, man, guess what? Like everyone is gripped by a narrative. Don't forget, people still think they're early to Bitcoin. All right. So what the X, what Cripple do is they unlock tokens and then they send some back. 
And then they dump the tokens that they've kept. But they, they've used, like, psychological warfare in the market. They go, oh, we think this is so valuable. We're not going to dump all the tokens you gave to us. So it's the same as I go into your house, okay? I open up your safe, and I find your $10,000 of cash savings. I take all of the cash savings out. I take it home. And then next week, I come back to your house and I say, you know what? You're actually a good friend. Let me give you back $6,000. And you go, what about the other four? Huh? Huh? Didn't hear you. Didn't hear you. That's exactly what Cripple are doing. Literally, that's exactly what they do. They unlock all the tokens and they go, hey, I'm going to give them back to you. I'm, I'm not joking. Go look it up. <laughs> they do that. That's the escrow. That's why <laughs> I know. No one believes me. Do you believe me? Go, dude, I'm telling you, friends, go do it. That's what they do. That's what they do. And I learned this. I go, man, there's no way this has been working for 10 years. It's been working for over 10 years, okay? Most importantly, it's a dying narrative and getting older. Excellent, friends. You got to remember, in crypto, there are two pillars that you must understand. Who, who made this, friends? Me. I made the book. We are the book. Make sure, please, sharpen your elbows every single day. You got to break the back of the bears. Make sure your chairs are very squeaky. And please, orange juice, friends. Vitamin C, very important. There are coins and there are narratives. They both age. You understand? They both age in cycles. Coins are either cycle one, two, three, or four. Narratives are either one, two, three, or four cycles old. Okay, the oldest narrative, of course, is Bitcoin store of value part, but also an equally old one is payment solutions. Okay, so you know what's a new one? Artificial intelligence cycle one, fresh, new, always has product market fit. Next cycle, though, it's not going to have as much. It's going to be something new. DeFi was a product market fit. It was cycle one narrative back in 2020. But then, obviously, now it's it's older, okay? So, obviously, you want to be in cycle one stuff and, and coin new coin stuff. But also, if you're in cycle two things, just know that you're going to get a diminished gain with, let's say, a 95% chance. I care about making money. People who want to be right, they all believe they're in the 5% chance where their thing isn't going to diminish gains. But, you know, it is what it is. So, XRP, friends, had a dying narrative of payment solutions. So, if you even check out the XRP USD chart, by the way, you should always chart in Bitcoin, of course, that of course, friends. So... As you can see, XRP goes up, Cripple keep dumping, keep dumping, and this was 2017 up here. This was their second cycle, so this is the first cycle here, and here you have the third cycle down here. You can see this is great, so you, this is great, this is great. This is an abomination of a cycle. People blame it on the corrupt SEC. Let me tell you something. The SEC could have literally given them an ETF, and they still would have had that chart. Trust me, I know it doesn't make sense to you now, friends. After another 10 years of being in markets, you'll know exactly what I mean. There are bigger forces at play when it comes to this. The XRP army have survived. Yes, they are extremely wrecked poop army. Honestly, God bless you. I don't know. Look, every time I go out and meet somebody in real life, they hold an XRP. And I'm just like, oh my God, there is no freaking way. Yep, yes, it is. So congratulations to you. I pray for you. Man, you guys, I hope you get that $10 XRP. You guys deserve it more than anyone else. The amount of shit you've been taking for so long. Well, so <clears throat> look, XRP in 2021, was in its third cycle. It gave a poopy, cursed gain. But the first and second cycle, friends, were like, whoa. You know, that like it, it blew everything out of the water. You can go, go back and check it. Now, a lot of people, they don't know. So <laughs> what happens is people think this first cycle was poop. No, 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 friends. Cripple printed their coin down here for literally near zero. So their first return was a 4,096X. Do you understand that? So yeah, you made a token out of thin air and you get dump it 4,000x higher, literally. So yes, that, it's just that Cripple got the tokens, not the main public, all right? However, in cycle two, which was 2017, which is crossing the chasm, the biggest crypto adoption spree of all time, that gave a 700x. It was basically, I think it was, yeah, about 700x. Wow, 600 to 700x in 12 months. Can you believe that? January 20th, wow. So that's what actually, people are still here today, Friends, not even people, everybody. They're all here today because of that pump. They're still trying to relive this pump, okay? This 700x in one year. That's why everybody, when everyone, when anyone, whenever you see somebody doing a fractal of, of XRP, it's always, oh, this is the one, this is the one, this is the one that's always they're going to be doing, okay? But it, it's important to understand that XRP is aging. However, it's still here. So the whole crux of the issue now, XRP is now in its fourth cycle, which usually means, uh-oh, you're getting old. No, you're getting old. You were getting old a long time ago, friends. You, your XRP shouldn't have even been owned in its third cycle. 
Newsflash, you basically never want to own anything in their third cycle because we only have one example of where third cycle stuff crushes it, and her name is Dogecoin. Dogecoin was blessed as part of the meme narrative from Elon Musk and was put as meme status, and that's why it did a 300x in its third cycle, which was an acceleration of what it did the second cycle, which is like a 200x. You know, Stephen, but that, that is an anomaly. That is, you can't find that ever again, pretty much, okay? That's that's like, a, the it's not the rule, that was the exception. The world now is waiting to see if this old coin XRP can finally pay off the loyal diehard fans. I'm waiting for it, friends. I want XRP to bust that high more than anybody in crypto, more than anybody who owns XRP. I want it for them. Firstly, I, deserve, I believe they deserve it a lot, but also I want to believe that if you just hold your coin long enough, eventually, it might take eight years, but eventually it breaks that all-time high and you, you do get the payoff that you really want. Now, this is the XRP USD chart that I'm just showing you right here, which is actually at right here. So the returns, friends, see, as you can see, right, we did a 700X in cycle two. What did you do from the bottom of the zombie virus here? 15X, which is trash. If you measure it from here, not the week to week, you get like an eight or nine X, which is absolutely filth. Think about it, Luna did an 800X, Hex did a 10,000X, you know, you're doing an eight. You know what I mean? Doge did a 300X. So as you can see, that's pretty much a failure point. Now, the beautiful part is this thing has been giving everyone hell, but it's just been grinding up. So look, I really, really, I'm praying, man. Can you guys please go up? I, I really want them to do this, friends. But I want you to know this is a long time, dude. This is such a freaking long time. This is cycle two, cycle three, cycle four. So most people, friends, they are, this this cycle, they're in this poopy point and they don't know it yet, okay? So hopefully they get glory in the next cycle. So pretty much what I'm saying is a lot of people thinking that they're in the new thing, but they're really, really not. And if XRP can finally, as I am dreaming, break up above this, it would just, it would really breathe that life back into everybody and go, oh my gosh, if I just believe if I just hold, if the army, if the community of the coin, I mean the cult, the community, if we just hang around long enough, we will get back to those all-time highs. But, you know, talking about all-time highs, by the way, friends, to a lot of communities is actually extreme FUD because a lot of people, they believe that they're right. So they believe that they're holding the coin that's not going to just touch their all-time high but break it by about like a 5x or a 10x. Okay, always the one that comes to mind. People always talk about Hex, for example, at 55 cents. So if you said, hey, Hex is going 55 cents, yeah, a year ago that was like considered extreme FUD. Everybody basically just just basically stabs you metaphorically. Yeah, yeah, heathen, heathen. But now everyone's basically pretty much, they're begging for like a third of that. They're begging for it. Everyone's pretty much begging for it at this point. But I can give any examples. There's so many coins that do that. You know, obviously Chainlink, everyone wants it above 55 bucks again. And like, you know, Every single coin, trust me, everyone's in the same boat when it comes to these, okay? The funniest part, though, is XRP, friends, I don't know if you've seen it. There's an XRP meme. They say XRP, the standard. And when you inquire what it is, I mean, like, if I've got all my friends and family, okay, this is just a general message to all of you. To let you guys know, XRP are like this weird sub-side culture in crypto where the coin doesn't move, uh, they're not even part of crypto. They have their own like little community and everyone looks at them like, what are you guys cheering? Like you're not even moving. You know, like people are like making casino coins and memes and all these other poopy stuff and you know, you get Pulse Chain launches and, and DEXs and buy and burn and there's all this financial innovation. There's this restaking and staking all this stuff and actually people throw Ponzi money around and we look at XRP like, how have you guys just kept that at the whole time? And you realize why. It's because... The character persona of the average XRP person, most of them, they are white collar, lawyers, clean shaven types, okay? They're more like stocks type of people and they don't like to change stuff too often. It's like once they're in a club, they don't like to leave the club, okay? Similar to a cult, but kind of, yeah, not really. It's, it's, it's similar to a cult. So these guys don't like um, changing too often. And once there's a story and a narrative, it's like, this is what we've chosen. That kind of explains it, right? That's why they're happy to keep DCAing this, even though it goes nowhere and it's just been punishing everywhere else. But I just want to tell you something right now. The market doesn't, get, doesn't care, all right? 
Mr. and Mrs. Market, I don't know what they are, some sort of sexual hybrid weed beast thing. It don't care. It doesn't care what your feelings are. It doesn't care what you bought. It doesn't care how long you've been holding. It actually doesn't care, okay? It's the mind of the market. Now, I'm just telling you, don't just sell any bags. Just keep an open mind, man. Just keep an open mind. Like, you can, like, hedge by buying competitor coins, right? So Chainlink has been chosen by Swift. That's a, that's a possibility. You don't have to throw all your bag size in. You can just throw a bit in. Right, you can also do stuff like participating in cycle one narratives. Like, don't firm buy anything, but you know, there's AI, there's DPIN, there's this DSI. If you like doing Ethereum restaking, by the way, XRP friends, no one in crypto hates Ethereum more than XRP, which is news to many, many people. I know, and you think I'm joking? No, 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 friends, go, go watch XRP community people when they make videos about Ethereum. The views are lower. XRP people hate Ethereum that much. They won't even watch their favorite influencers talk about it, which is, I know, the most fascinating, strangest occurrence. Like, this, who who are these weird creatures that look at Vitalik and go, you know what? I don't like you. I don't like you at all. <laughs> Get in my town. Get out of here. Like, dude, it's it's crazy. By the way, also tongue-in-cheek because, you know what, uh, Ripple have had to fork Uniswap which was given a grant by Vitalik himself and the code checked. So it's kind of funny that Vitalik had to hand check the code to make sure there's no bugs for Uniswap and now Cripple have to deploy it because their technology hasn't been able to produce anything for over for over 10 years now because the liquidity model pretty much sucks. It's funny, Hayden Adams made a better liquidity model literally in his underwear with skid stains just eating Hot Pockets. <laughs> That's crypto for you. That explains it, right? So the XRP standard, friends, that's what they refer to, the XRP, they talk, talk about the, the payment standard, but Ethereum got the product market fit, friends, and you don't have to look at me, look what XRP versus Ethereum chart did, so this is, XRP collapsed against Ethereum's price, look at this fat Wojek that I put here, as I always love putting that fat Wojek, friends, I love Wojek, so, uh, the, look, the payment standard that XRP Army wanted, it's actually in Ethereum, so Ethereum was the payment standard. And you're like, wait a minute, it cost me a hundred bucks to send $10. Yes, guess what? The market doesn't care. Go, friends, go to New York and go to the people trying to like lease a place to pay like $2,000 rent for something. Go tell them, hey, your prices are too high. They'll literally tell you, get out, all right, get out and wipe your feet on the floor mat and you stink, get out of here because someone's literally going to come and ask to live here in about five minutes. You know what I mean? So who cares? You know what I mean? This, it's supply and demand. It's, ba it's just basic economics, okay? So the whole point, though, of all of this is the XRP army call them the payment standard of the world. Obviously, the market's not choosing that at all, and they peaked a long time ago. And I just want to show you, many people don't believe me. Did you know at one point, one third of the entire crypto industry was XRP, friends? This is the XRP dominance. Look what it peaked at, 30%. So it's basically almost one third. Can you believe that? Literally, one in three of all of crypto was XRP. So Friends, you are forgiven for thinking crypto was about payment solutions. You're completely forgiven. It was literally one third of the whole industry. You know what it is today? XRP is down to 1.4%. That's just bleeding out down over time. You see that? So like I say, friends, okay, do you want to be right or do you want to make money? Because if you want to make money, you got to be careful. Because look, if you just care about being right, look at this. Look how right you thought you were. Imagine you were long XRP. You're like, oh my gosh. We are now 30% of the whole crypto industry. I told you payment solutions was the future. Okay, how's this? Eight years later, you've now collapsed forever. No, you're not actually the future. You were just hot for that period of time. So the XRP standard, the payments, that's what they want. But that's why, friends, the XRP standard, the real standard would be if XRP was able to break the all-time high and usher in hopium and copium for the rest of the altcoin industry, right, it will breathe so much life into the dead coins that would resurrect like a phoenix from the ashes. And all these cycle two, cycle three coins, they would now have an actual standard because XRP will be that standard. Because XRP will be the official shit coin to rise from the ashes where you just had to persevere long enough, okay? You just, you had to keep in the game, keep everybody there, have conferences, and it would set a very good precedent because look, XR, because Ripple dump their coins on everyone and don't innovate anything. Actually trash, okay? Literally completely left behind for the crypto industry. So even if Cripple were able to bring XRP up with the with the army and do it, it would be it would be absolutely amazing, friends. It it 
it's literally, you know, that story of the tortoise and the hare. You know what happens at the end, right? The tortoise goes in, has a glass of orange juice with the hare, basically sips him a pill, takes him out to the back, shoots him, and then he finishes the race. That's exactly what this story would be. The tortoise of XRP finally going. Now, I'm not telling you to stick with your tortoises. Absolutely not. Because do you know how hard it is, man, to just sit here and watch all these new narratives appear? Now I've given you the framework of Cycle 1 coins, Cycle 1 narratives, and now you know to buy in the depression. I can't figure it out, friends. I have a friend right here wearing a Jigglypuff hat who only made 2,800 plus videos, 50,000 posts. That's how much it is on Twitter. So I'm a freak of nature. That is impossible, right? You can check it yourself. Telling you, please buy in the depression. And by please, I mean I order you now because you might regret it later on. Okay, literally, that's the only the most important thing to do. Now you can see why, right? So even though the XRP BTC ratio is poop, all right, it's mostly, look, People don't really care because I, I know you guys, you've learned nothing from the ratios. But not you, of course, most, most people do because everyone wants to measure in USD. Why? Because they're from the existing system. They don't even see crypto as a new system. Let me tell you something, friends. Everybody who comes into crypto stays. I wonder why. Hmm, I wonder why. It's because the system's freaking better. It's just that most of you are on high doses of Xanax, anti-anxiety, psychological pills. You've all got therapists. TikTok generation, you don't know what the hell's going on. Like everyone's got an OnlyFans. What are you next? Only friends. You're, you're paying girls for free. There's free porn on the internet, guys. I don't know what the hell you're doing. Doing all this weird shit on the internet. It's no wonder none of you know how to diamond hands anything. You know, <clears throat> it's no wonder you see the USD volatility doing this for your coin and you think, ah, I gotta get out. So hopefully we just get some up only action going on. Now, of course, this is the XRP ETH chart. It's so important because it shows you, look, <clears throat> XRP, if XRP can break its high in USD, it's the final hope because that's basically giving the people what they want. I don't care about that though. This is the real chart, okay? This basically means, friends, you can't you can't screw around here, okay? This is basically XRP against a coin with real product market fit. You will just sink forever. Now, obviously, you're mistaken. How are you to get Ethereum at the start? No, no, no. You don't have to get it at the start, friends, but you can even see down here, Ethereum, right? That was basically the play here. Like you're just, just showing you cycle one coins, friends, cycle one narratives. I'm telling you, you know exactly what it is. Now, obviously, you can be in cycle two narratives, but you just got to be in the new coins until crypto starts to develop a reasonable path for sustainability that does not rely on handing out the coin itself. Let me repeat that again. You have to keep doing this strategy until crypto can sustain itself by basically making product market fit like Ethereum. Ethereum has this, by the way. Ethereum chain is net profitable. It has a cash flow. We are paying excessive money just to get the demand, just to fulfill our demand for the block space, all right? But not all cryptocurrencies are like this. Maker and stuff are like this. The market doesn't really value these things yet. Why? Because it's, it market's always known, oh, I'll just go buy stuff and speculate with everyone else, okay? So that's the game. One day, though, in the future, there will be a point where the products and the use cases are actually generating cash flow from the real world, and those will be long-term, sustainable Apple, Amazon, Google's, whatever they are in crypto, right? So obviously, we all thought Chainlink was, is on its way there. That's one of them. Oracles, right? Because everyone's going to have to pay for the oracles, and all the data gets hooked up, and all the complexities get hooked up. That's why Crypto Friends is a very, very super long-duration asset. So this XRP ETH chart, friends, this is my real chart. However, most people are just praying that the XRP USD chart is going to be the one to go up. <clears throat> That's why I'm praying. Okay, you know what? You're never going back up against Bitcoin. You're never going to go to the hot. You're never going to go back to enormous Bitcoin um, market dominance. You're never going to crush Ethereum, pretty much. I would never say never. I hope it happens. I really do hope it happens. Inspire hope. So you, you can't do all those three, but at least hopefully. You do the consolation pump, which is, can you just go up against USD and break the all-time high? Can you just go up and get to four bucks just to show everyone, you know what, if you stick through it, you're going to make it, all right? And that's actually the standard that I think the real XRP standard, which I think will be inspirational for everyone out there. So don't forget, Ethereum is still a beast. XRP payment solutions is very old. It's cycle four now. And it's not that, look, friends, in crypto, it's not, there's no like good or bad, okay? It's not that. It's relevant, irrelevant. That's it. AI, very relevant. 
Very relevant. It's the most relevant. Okay, decentralized artificial intelligence. Decentralized word, just throw it out. Doesn't mean anything in crypto because they're all probably fluff. It's just AI. We want artificial intelligence, the new hot thing. Okay. Payment solutions are like, bleh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're old now, man. It doesn't track us. We don't care about that. Another thing, hard pill to swallow, DeFi. DeFi, yes, changed the world. Yeah, kind of, but now it's in cycle number two. It's still got some juice left in it, but next cycle, 2028, it will be cycle number three. So what we call DeFi and how we envision DeFi and it taking over the world, it will take over the world just in a different way. Now, we're trying to see all the value capture here and there, but it basically, it just means like, look, if you're carrying coins from 2019, 2020, 2021, yes, you got one. We got you, me, we all got one last cycle. You got to sell in euphoria and then we've got to reset in the next cycle again, okay? So you have to decide that after you have all this information, how you will allocate. I can just give you the blueprint, right? Cycle one coins are great. So new coins are great. You just got to be careful. You don't pay too expensive and you got to watch out for token unlocks. They're great. Cycle one coins and basically coins that weren't around in 2021. It's pretty much it. Okay. Also cycle one narrative. So coins that are part of that narrative, that's what you're looking for. Cause you know, oh, I can go make a new store of value coin. Okay. That's bad. I'm making a new coin, but it's from a very, very old narrative. Okay. But if I make a new coin and it's got artificial intelligence in it, you're like, oh, you know what I mean? Your eyes light up and then eventually you want to, you want to crank it. So new narratives, friends, they're, they're not constant. You got AI, DPIN, DSI, restaking. I've spoken many about them, okay? Just don't go FOMO into anything, okay? Don't just go momentum trading. I'm waiting for crashes and stuff to happen just so we can see if we can participate in them, all right? So there we have it. I'm cheering on XRP Army, and I pray that they can do great things with their price. So even if, you know, from here to the all-time high, it's like a 6X, even if they like, just get back there, it's going to inspire pretty much the whole crypto industry because then they'll be like, if they can do it, we can do it, you know, because we are better for X, Y, and Z, you know what I mean? Like our founders don't dump on us. We don't need an office building. We don't do these like manipulation escrow stuff. We're actually not cycle four narrative or cycle two narrative, you know? So that's what I'm pretty much, I'm really, really cheering them on, okay? So I hope this this blueprint, basically, I've literally like Neo friends, you get to see the matrix now. You're like, oh, that's why everything moves the way it does. Yes. And now you kind of know why it's dangerous to believe any narrative. Because effectively, when you go to first principles, when someone really swallows a narrative, and I know you like swallowing, it's a family friendly show. If someone really swallows the narrative, what they're effectively admitting to, they say to themselves is, I am not going to cop any gravity or any laws of physics or age. I am not going to experience the earth spinning around the sun. Okay. The calendars don't apply to me. That's effectively what they're saying. You know, it sounds like a crazy person, right? Imagine if someone said to you, guess what? I never age. I am outside time. You think you're literally only Vitalis like that, friends, outside 4,000 IQ aliens. By the way, that's why if you ever watch any of the alien retelling stories when they uh, get kidnapped and stuff. They seem to like be able to make some sort of bubble and do some weird stuff and basically stop time and move time around and stuff. So it's kind of like funny when they describe it stuff. So yes, only Vitalik basically is outside of time. We are all restricted by it. So this is literally it, giving you the blueprint here and there. And until we get proper, real, abundant use cases for crypto, because guess what? There are some like Ethereum's crushed it. Ethereum's still positive PE. But for the rest, I guess we'll wait and see. Yeah, this is Jigglypuff, Jiggly Boy. Make sure you like, subscribe, catch you soon.